couple other comments. First of all, I think that um, Wall Street definitely had a role in the financial crisis, but I also think we have responsibility here on our end. Uh, between the Community Reinvestment Act, Fannie and Freddie, uh, the out of control that we let them get, uh, that, that's certainly because without the real estate market doing what it was doing, I mean, that's where these bets were, were, were occurring and, and everybody got the false idea that uh, the whole real estate value was going to continue to go up and up and up where bubbles never continue to go up. We, we know that and unfortunately a lot of smart people on Wall Street uh, got fooled by that. The point that I want to make also is that you all have mentioned that you are market makers. And, uh, and I think part of this hearing is to find out whether you are actually market manipulators instead of just market makers. And I think that that's you know, a key part of it, and that's where I'm going to take some of my questioning here. Um, I want to start with um, talking about the role of the, the credit rating agencies. Uh, do, did you personally, or do you know of Sachs, uh, Goldman Sachs employees uh, who actually spoke to the credit rating agencies and tried to influence how some of these tranches were rated? Go down the line, just yes or no. Senator, I, I personally didn't typically speak with them, but people on my team worked with the agencies on new issues with respect to helping them understand it and how the deals would be rated. Okay. Thanks. I didn't know anyone who would fit under that category. I have the same answer as Mr. Birnbaum. Okay. I did work uh, with rating agencies, Senator, uh, similarly to explain uh, to those rating agencies uh, the products that need to be rated. Okay. How do you, how do you justify this the, for B, for Mr. Sparks and Mr. Tory? How, how do you justify taking triple B rated products, repackaging them, and getting the rating agencies to re-rate those as triple A rated products. Because that's what they did. Should I try to address that sure. question, Senator? I mean, ultimately, uh, you know, rating agencies have their own you know, models to, to rate products. So we, we were not you know, influencing in no shape or form the, you know, the way they rate these transactions, at least their, their models. Uh, we're just barely applying uh, their modeling assumptions. In their modeling assumptions, which nobody supposedly knows about, though, you just you both said that you either did yourself or you know people who, who did, um, went to the rating agencies and tried to convince them about the products. How can you justify taking triple B rated products, repackaging those as triple A products, or re and trying to sell those as AAA products. I mean, because that's what a lot of the CDOs did, correct? Senator. Yes. That is correct. Yeah, well, that, for reason, give me a chance. And Senator, uh, the, the rationale that the agencies gave it, I believe, was because of an assumption of diversity, which meant that certain deals would perform differently than other deals. And so in that collection, uh, the assessment from the agencies, and I think the market assessment at the time, was that deal performance had less correlation amongst themselves. Mr. Torrey, you were about to answer. Yeah. No, no, I, I would just add uh, one more point, which is that rating agencies uh, rely on you know, historical data to rate those transactions. And when rating uh, the products I think you're referring to as, as CDO products, repackaging triple B securities, they rely on the historical performance of, of triple B rated obligations to, to rate the, the CDO products. Do you think that their ratings made sense? I mean, the, the methodology made sense. There, you believe their methodology made sense? The mathematical methodology made sense. The assumption that you know, historical performance is a good indicator of future performance for certain asset classes proved to be not correct. Did you ever feel an obligation <clears throat> to people who uh, were buying those products from you to let them know that these were triple B rated products that were repackaged as triple A? This was, I mean, the, the, the specifics of the products were always disclosed in, in the offering documents. That's not what my question was. Did you feel an obligation at all? This gets back to not necessarily a fiduciary obligation, but did you feel, you know, just 
geez, these people are buying this stuff for us, and do you, you understand that these are triple, I mean, did you tell them specifically that these were actually triple B rated products that were repackaged and, you, and the credit agency somehow in their wisdom repackaged them or re-scored them as triple A rated products? S Senator, you're, you're exactly right on point, and that relates to a point I'm not sure if you were here for, which is what the underlying assets are is what's material. So that information would be disclosed at new issue as to what underlies the security. Goldman Sachs, though, is looked at, I think, by a lot of people. One of the reasons that uh, people want to do business with Goldman Sachs and some of the other major players on Wall Street is that they feel that you, cert, you know, have a certain level of expertise. And, and I think that that's kind of what we're trying to get at up here is whether or not you know, and that's why I asked you, if the, do you believe the modeling was, was correct, good modeling as far as rating agencies were concerned, Mr. Sparks? I don't have the specifics of their modeling. I think in hindsight, the historical correlation was much higher than what the rating agencies assumed. I think for anybody to defend what the rating agencies did would be ludicrous at this point. Um, and, and I think that there's plenty of evidence out there to show that what they did. Who pay, who, do, you, do you all pay the rating agencies? Uh, typically, that would be paid by people involved in the deal. So it could be a deal so, expense. So, it, could be an, it could be an issuer. Right. It could be so Goldman Sachs does pay large amounts of money to the rating agencies. Is that correct? On those deals, oftentimes it did. And do you think that that maybe appear, has at least an appearance of a potential conflict of interest? With respect to maybe appearance of conflict of interest? Yes, I think that there is that concern with respect to that particular point. Um, I want to go to a, uh, a deal that Goldman Sachs did. It, it has to do with the known as Hudson One. It was a synthetic CDO that referenced a $2 billion in subprime triple B rated mortgage backed securities. Uh, Goldman selected the referenced assets. The purpose of the transaction appears to have been to get those assets off Goldman's own books. Uh, basically, Goldman was the only uh, buyer uh, when it, uh, to sell this CDO and then make a bet against it. Um, is that an accurate description of what happened with Hudson One? Uh, Senator, I believe that deal was uh, purely static synthetic, um, which means- Describe static synthetic, because sure. one of the things that, that I think sure. that confuses a lot of people um, is the definitions that you all put on things. For instance, you called something that was actually the, the first floor the bottom floor, you described it as a mezzanine, so it didn't sound so bad. Um, you know, there's a lot of spin that happened in your, in your terminology in dealing with all these financial products to make them sound a little better than others. So could you please explain as we're going on just for other people listening? Yes, Senator. The term static meant that the assets that were set in the deal could not change. The reason that's important is there were other CDOs that were done where an asset manager or someone else could, could choose to change the assets in the pool under certain parameters. So in this particular case, static meant here are the reference notes, the reference obligations that you're exposed to, and this is what they're going to be. Synthetic meant that there were no actual uh, cash securities that had been put in there. So, you know, Goldman didn't sell those securities into that because there weren't securities with respect to the reference on that. Yeah, but it operated the same way as well, cash it, being in there, didn't it? Correct. It had the risk of that, and that deal, my recollection, is it had a combination of single name, CDS, and some of the risk related to the ABX index outright. And, and Goldman obviously recognized that there was some significant risk with that particular product, and that's why they sold them short, correct? Well. Again, there, this deal, I think, was done in October 06. Was, I may, if I have my... I don't have the date in front of me. Um, there were investors, a lot of investors in 06, and there continue to be investors in 07 who wanted exposure and risk in certain forms. And so, you know, I had mentioned that these deals did not... Is that a little unusual, though, for, for Goldman Sachs to be the only 
part of it that, that did the entire deal on the short? Well, um, many, most of the time, not all the time on synthetics, Goldman would provide the synthetic short uh, into the deal for a number of reasons, some of which included the fact that we were involved in the deal. But then what we did with our risk on the other side could vary. I think that um, one of the points that needs to be made, first of all, is, and I think it's evidenced by the hearings that this committee has been having, is, is that this is an incredibly complex area of uh, not only our markets, but of our law. And uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I think that w the hearings that you're holding are very, very valuable. Um, but I think that we're just scratching the surface. And, uh, and I think it's one of the reasons that, that uh, I believe very strongly we need, to, uh, we need to fix the markets, we need to have a lot more transparency, and, and we need to make sure that people aren't being market manipulators, that, that uh, you know, some of the, the lines of questioning today that have come out, uh, actually probably some good suggestions in there, but a lot more needs to be done on, a lot more research needs to be done, and I, and I hope that the Senate actually takes its time. So, so one is that we don't end up hurting the little guys out there in, in Main Street, and we actually go after the people that, uh, whether it was uh, AIG, Goldman Sachs, you know, any of the other big traders, whether it was Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I hope, we'll, I hope that that's what the financial regulatory reform focuses on. I do want to get, and just, I, I hate to keep harping on this, but I think this is going to be an important part of, of what comes out. And that is, um, do you believe that, and, and, uh, and I'll just since, since the two of you are the only ones who responded to this earlier, on getting back to the rating agencies, do you believe that Goldman Sachs improperly influenced the rating agencies? No, Senator. Ms. Torrey? No, Senator. Uh, appreciate having that on the record. Um, the other point that I think that needs kind of an interesting point that when everything was going up, markets were going up, everybody was fat and happy, you all, and people at your firms and people at other firms around Wall Street made a heck of a lot of money in, in bonuses. Would you agree with that? I mean, large, large amounts of money. Pretty factual statement, wouldn't you agree? Asking me? Yes. Uh, interesting, when everything kind of came to a crash, incredible bonuses were still paid out. Even in firms where people, where their actual investors lost huge amounts of money, lost everything. Do you think that the incentives that are set up uh, in firms like Goldman Sachs are the proper incentives to have folks engage in ethical behavior? Each one of you down the line. Well, Senator, I, I think Goldman Sachs works hard to engage in ethical behavior in didn't, all aspects. Didn't say that. Didn't say that. I said, yeah. did you, do you think the way that the pay structure and the bonuses are set up lead to the, the proper incentives to have the people at Goldman Sachs and other, other uh, folks who do what you do on Wall Street, do you think that those incentives are there that, that uh, lead to ethical behavior? Well, again, Josh and I don't work there anymore, so I don't know exactly what they're... And that's why I'm asking you just a general comment about the way that bonuses are paid on Wall Street. Obviously, when the bonuses are paid, when everybody's you know, making money, that kind of makes sense to me. But when everybody's, all your, uh, you know, your people who are buying things from you, who were bought in the past, all of a sudden they lose huge amounts of money and, and folks still get paid huge bonuses, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense to a lot of Americans. That's what I'm asking. Do you think the incentives are the proper incentives to have ethical behavior on Wall Street? Okay, and again, Senator, it's just, just your don't opinion. Know, I don't know currently what those are, so I don't, I, you know, I don't want to. The way that you were paid in the past, how about that? Um, I believe consistent, yes, in the past, I believe at Goldman Sachs that... You had, you had proper incentives. The bonus structures I had, were I proper. Had, I believe at Goldman Sachs in the past, I had every reason to be ethical with respect to what the firm did with me, including compensation. Mr. Birnbaum? I mean, just to give some background on, on how people at, a, at Goldman, 
and, what, and I can't speak for the way it works today because I'm not there anymore. But the way people are paid there and the way people are promoted there, it, it's a function of performance, and, and a lot of that performance is indeed financial. But a huge component of performance at a place like Goldman is of a qualitative nature. It has to do with the culture of the firm, and it has to do with ethics, and it has to do with how one works within a team. And I can assure you that you could have enormous financial performance, but if you weren't cognizant of ethics, you would not be promoted, you would not be paid. In fact, you would probably be fired. Okay. Ms. Swenson? I echo the comments that Josh said. The simple answer to your answer is yes. Your question is yes. Okay. Ms. Tory? Yeah. I would echo some of my colleagues' comments that the, the compensation structure, which is based on the firm's performance, the business's performance, and the you know, personal performance, at least at Goldman Sachs, I think we're aligning incentives correctly. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think the- uh, Thank you, Senator you know, As all the questions have gone today, I think that we're, we're seeing some of the problems. Thank you.